What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News, and uh, I got some new news for you concerning Sugar Shane Mosley. Mosley has been an icon in the sport of boxing. He has, as of um, yesterday, which is, well, technically Wednesday, which is the 16th, decided to retire. Now, the funny thing about this is the reason he decided to, to retire was because of a bone fragment, an act, actually an operation that went wrong, removing bone fragments for, from his arm that wasn't really needed in his arm so he can continue his career. Um, but it got infected and um, his arm ended up burning and then getting infected because of the burn and then, you know, and that set him back. So he just decided, decided to retire, which was a very smart decision because, you know, um, in my opinion, along with other people's opinion, educated opinions that he's supposed to retire long ago. Now, this video is not to, you know, um, say I told you so or anything like that. This is a video that's actually celebrating the accomplishments of Sugar Shane Mosley because there are only three people with that that uses that sugar title, you know, um, the great Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, Sugar Ray Leonard and Sugar Shane Mosley. Uh, the guy has fought for 24 years, almost 25. Um, and, um, well, you know, he's been fighting since he was a kid, but, you know, professionally, he's been fighting 24 years and he's had a great career. So let's talk about his career. You know, um, he's arguably one of the 135, 130 pound best fighters in the world best lightweights best super featherweight fighters in the world because the things that he's done um he took the title from uh philip holiday you know he knocked out john john molina um jesse james leha uh, countless other guys um that he just dismantled at 130 you know the first time i saw sugar shane mosley was um when he did fight philip holiday and the fight, it was like, I knew he was something special. You know, the speed and the power that he had. And no one really knew what type of power he had until he went to welterweight. You know, and when he went to welterweight, you know, he fought guys like, um, well, when he moved up to fight Oscar De La Hoya. You know, um, De La Hoya back then was the cash cow. He avoided a fight with um, uh, Floyd Mayweather, because Floyd Mayweather uh, was at 130, you know, as um, Sugar Shane went to 135, but he moved up to fight De La Hoya, but also he couldn't make the weight no longer at 135, because remember, Sugar Shane Mosley is a couple years older than De La Hoya, and even De La Hoya is like, what, 44 right now, you know, or he will be if he's not, and I know he's born at 73, which Shane is born in 71, so that gives him two years. So his body was starting to fill in. So it was time for him to go to 147 anyway. So um, he was, he goes to 147, has a fight of the year, June 17th, 2000, against Oscar De La Hoya, which was a very, very good fight. You know, he beats De La Hoya unanimously. The first person to actually ever beat De La Hoya, you know, um, in reality. Uh, he lost, De La Hoya lost a um, controversial decision to Felix Trinidad, you know, in um, actually the year before, in 99. So, um, but Sugar Shane was the first one to actually beat De La Hoya, you know. Um, then he goes on and, and you know, the thing is, he fights De La Hoya and De La Hoya gets the, the bulk of the money, you know, um, and it, that was one of the best fights I remember seeing, you know, because you had three fights that year, you know, and uh, that was 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 the fighter of the year. And um, I remember it being on the um, the front of Knockout Kings uh, PlayStation video game that I used to love to play back in the day, you know. Um, but then, you know, he goes on and he uh, he takes on the best, you know, he fights uh, Vernon Forrest um, he gets head butted early. I think that threw him off. But 
if you can remember, Vernon Forrest was the same guy that kept him from the gold, from the Olympics, you know, so he stopped him in the wild card fight, you know, and uh, to Vernon Forrest. So Vernon Forrest pretty much had his number just like he had De La Hoya's number because he beat De La Hoya in the amateurs, you know, so um, he loses to Vernon Forrest on a decision, you know, he gets dropped for the first time in his career, you know, and, you know, Sugar Shane has, has been known to have a granite chin all the way through his career. Um, uh, then he fights uh immediate rematch to Shane, gets beat again by um Vernon Forrest. Vernon Forrest uh takes him another twelve rounds. It was a it was a little closer fight, but Vernon Forrest was just too big, just too tall. He was six feet tall, you know. Vernon Forrest was a big guy, you know. Um <laughs> Then he goes and fights De La Hoya after De La Hoya makes adjustments. You know, he gets with Mayweather, you know, senior, and he learns the, you know, the the shoulder roll. And uh, he still beats uh, De La Hoya, which that was a lot closer fight. And De La Hoya landed 100 more punches than him, you know. And then, mind you, due to that fact, that's when the... Um, it wasn't really the cha- the Vernon Forrest fight. You know, Vernon Forrest fight was his first taste of defeat, but he started landsliding after the De La Hoya, the second fight, you know, because that was after he his saga with Vernon Forrest. He was caught with inform enhan- enhancing drugs, EPO, um, at the time, and he had to testify that he was, in fact, taking these particular uh, drugs or whatever, you know, and then, um, the funny thing about it at that time, I didn't even hear about it. You know, I read about it much later as Floyd Mayweather, you know, years after that, you know, mentioned it in, uh, HBO 24 seven about, Hey, we know how, we don't know how good for, uh, Sugar Shane Mosley is anyway, cause he was taking, uh, performance hands and drugs. Uh, I said it before, you know, just like, uh, you know, uh, Mayweather talks and how he, you know, he has to repeat itself <laughs> from the things that he said, but, um, you know, but, you know, but after that, he, you know, he had kind of a, you know, Keanu Reeves like career, you know, cause after that, um, he turns down a, a third fight, a rubber match with Oscar De La Hoya and fights Winky Wright of all people, <laughs> you know, and Winky Wright is, uh, you know, is one of the, you know, he was a guy that, you know, had a controversial fight with uh, Fernando Vargas, you know, and Fernando Vargas, you know, was squeezed out a decision against him, which a lot of people, including myself, think thought Winky Wright just outboxed Fernando Vargas, you know, so he takes him on and uh, he loses unanimous decision. Now, get this, you know, karma is very bad, you know, uh, it, it, it it's it's everywhere, you know, the things you do, the seeds you sow. You know, you have to look at what happens because of the things you do. Um, Sugar Shane Mosley won a decision, a controversial decision against De La Hoya. And then gets popped for uh, performance enhancing drugs, EPO. Then goes and fights Winky Wright. But get this, he turns down a $10 million fight with... Felix Trinidad, which I thought was odd because, you know, um, you know, Trinidad, he he was suffering his first loss, but they were still at 154 at that time. No, no, no. They were going to, I think that was going to be a, um, a catch weight, but he turned it down, which is kind of weird. You know, I, uh, I never knew that until I researched it, but, um, then he gets beat by Winky Wright, you know, um, you know, he turns down the, the third fight with De La Hoya, or the, really the rematch with De La Hoya, and then fights Vernon Forrest and gets beat twice. So it's like, you know, every time he decides to make a decision business-wise, it was always the wrong one. But, I mean, he did fight tough opponents, you know. Who can say you fought Winky Wright? Who can say you fought Vernon Forrest twice? Vernon Forrest was the guy that nobody wanted to fight. So was Winky Wright. I mean, he fought both of those guys. So he fought the guys that were avoided, except for Trinidad, and he fought the guys that everybody wanted to fight because of the money, which was De La Hoya, you know. And um, he goes on to dismantle uh, Fernando Vargas, knocks him out, both fights. You know, he had him looking like an alien. He had, had Fernando Vargas looking like E.T., you know, and... Um, 
you know, he go, you know, he he dismantles a lot of guys, man. Um, he waits for an opportunity to fight Floyd after Floyd beats De La Hoya. You know, um, he he dismantles Antonio Margarita, more karma. Margarita, Margarito, um, you know, got popped with those inswells in his gloves. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess that fire had added fuel to the fire with Sugar Shane because he beat him like he was pissed. You know, um, even though Sugar Shane fights with intensity anyway, if you've seen the Delahoya fight, you know, he those right hands were, he threw those with mean intentions. You know, he, he threw them to hurt people. Um, but that fight, he really dismantled Margarito. You know, but the problem about Sugar Shane, he was running out of time. All great fighters do. You know, you only have a certain amount of time to do certain things. And you better do it quick, fast, and hurry. Because when it's when it's gone, it's gone. You know, so his last great performance was against Antonio Margarito. You know, he beats Mayorga, which Mayorga knocks out... Um, Vernon Forrest, their first fight, and beats him again. So he beats Vernon Forrest. So that's Mayorga's claim to fame. You know, the king big shit talker from Nicaragua, right? He he gets him, he beats him, you know, then Sugar Shane goes back and knocks him out. Um, twice, because he knocks him out later in his career. Um, but after that, he started getting beat. He got actually stopped by uh, Anthony Mundine. You know, which was a very big surprise, you know, and then after that it was time to retire because when you start your stronghold, the things that you do well or the things that you're known to do well, you start doing badly and those are start lacking. It's time to quit because everyone knows that Sugar Shane Mosley has a good chin. But when he got stopped by Anthony Mundine, it just showed that he did, he wasn't on that level and he shouldn't even be competing. You know, he should know when to stop. You know, I did a video on this years ago, a couple years ago, about um, Roy Jones Jr., you know. And the problem is those guys see guys like um, Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins fought till he was 50 years old, which, and now everyone, that, that is the new standard, you know. And now all these fighters that are 38, 39, been in wars, you know, wear and tear on their bodies, you know, constant days and times and months and years in the gym that has a 20 year career is trying to exceed that time. You know, every fighter's different. You know, people forget Bernard Hopkins was in jail a long time, so he was incarcerated a long time. Yes, he had a long career, but he had a long layoff too. You know, he didn't have that wear and tear like people thought he had. You know what I mean? And then really the, the type fighter, um, Bernard Hopkins was he was a totally different beast so a lot of guys including Sugar Shane you know and Roy Jones Jr. those guys they wanted to try to duplicate what Bernard Hopkins did you know what I mean it's just like everyone trying to be like Stephen Curry thinking that you you know that every th three-pointer that you know you know that you can you can land every three-pointer you know like that's not normal you know that's someone else's specialty quit trying to be like other people you know, but uh, Sugar Shane has had a great career. He should have retired earlier, but a lot of fighters do the same thing because it's the warrior inside of them. It's their passion. But a lot of times, you know, uh, their passion can turn into their tragedy, you know. So, um, but the guy, you know, he has a son fighting. I think he should have um, took more time with his son because I think his son really needs him in his corner, just like his father was there for him. The Mosleys have been there for the Mosleys. I know, you know, Jack and Shane has had their differences throughout the, you know, their career, you know, or whatnot. But, you know, he did have his son. And, and you know, the, in the best of Sugar Shane, he was with Jack Mosley, you know, um, no one else. And I think Sugar Shane should pass on the tor torch and then um, be with his buddy, be with his son, you know and uh, mentor his son and be in the corner with his son. If he wants to be a part of the sport, I think that's how he can continue. I don't think his strong point is commentating. I think his strong point is actually in the trenches helping his son out because his son really needs him, you know, because his son is, uh, you know, he's a tough guy. He's big. He's a big dude. So he's going to probably end his career probably at uh, middleweight or super, mid super middleweight, 
you know, or maybe 175 because he's still young. You know, his young son looks a lot like Shane. You know, uh, Shane was a far superb, better fighter. But who knows um, if Shane takes the time with him, stop being rather, you know, well, he's retired now. So, you know, I think he was actually being a little selfish, you know, trying to fight himself when he should be taking time with his son. You know, um, but um, Sugar Shane, you know, he is one of the greats. He earned that name well. He's, he beat some of the best guys in the sport. De La Hoya, um, Leha, countless others, man. Vargas, Margarito, um, you know, he just beat guys that were that was supposed to be the guys. No one wanted a piece of Shane. It was fighters that fought everyone, like Fernando Vargas, fought everyone. You know, Fernando Vargas is a true example that fought everyone. Even he stated earlier that Sugar Shane Mosley was the person that he wouldn't want to fight, you know, or he wanted to fight less than anyone else because he knew the talent that he had, you know, and that's saying a lot from Fernando Vargas because Fernando Vargas didn't run from no one. You know, he fought everyone, you know. So, you know, that's me wrapping it up on uh, Sugar Shane Mosley. You know, um, I look forward to still seeing him in the ring, in the corner with his son. You know, um, I hope he stays healthy, stay blessed. But um, you guys been counterpunched. Peace.